Hello guys. So in this session, we are going to learn about GitLab. So as you can see here in our summary, you can see we are going to learn what is GitLab, then features of GitLab, then GitLab architecture, and then in last, what is GitLab CICD pipeline. So let's start. So first of all, what is GitLab? So as you can see here, GitLab is a web-based DevOps platform that provides a complete set of tools for software development, version control, continuous integration, or continuous deployment, CICD, and collaboration. And it is a popular alternative to GitHub and offers a more comprehensive set of features for organizations looking to manage their entire software development lifecycle in one platform. So that's the small introduction about GitLab. Okay, then here next is GitLab features. So feature or advantage, you can say advantage, right? Or we can say features also. So here I mentioned some features. Here I mentioned nine features of GitLab. So first is Git repository management. So what is Git repository management? So the GitLab provides hosting for a Git repositories, allowing developers to store, manage, and collaborate on their code base using Git version control. Then next is issue tracking. So what is issue tracking? So GitLab includes an issue tracking system to manage and prioritize tasks, bugs, and feature requests during the development process. Then third is continuous integration or you can see continuous deployment in CICD, right? Means CICD. CI means continuous integration and continuous deployment means CICD. Then GitLab has built-in CI-CD capabilities that enables developers to automate the build, test, and deployment process for their applications. Then code review. So GitLab facilities code, collaboration, and review through merge requests, means similar to pull requests in GitHub, and offers features for code committing and discussion. Then next feature is wiki and documentation. So GitLab provides a wiki feature for documenting project, making it easier for teams to maintain project related documentation. Then next feature is container registry. So GitLab includes a container registry to store Docker images, making it convenient for project that use containerization for development. Then next is security and code analysis. So GitLab offers security scanning and code analysis tools to help identify vulnerabilities and improve code quality. Then next is integration and extensibility. So GitLab supports integration with various third-party tools and services, allows teams to customize their development work workflow according to their needs. Then last feature is here, Enterprise Edition. So GitLab offers an Enterprise Edition that includes additional features and support uh, tailored to for larger organization and enterprises use cases, right? So here, uh, that's the nine features of GitLab. Which features? Here. Git repository management, issue tracking, continuous integration and continuous deployment, that means our CI CD, then code review, then wiki documentation, then container registry, then security and code analysis, then integration and extensibility. And then last feature is enterprise edition. So that's the features of our GitLab. Then here you can see GitLab provides both cloud hosted, gitlab.com, right? And self hosted versions, which can be deployed on private premises on your own services. Then here you can see the node. Please note that developments may, may have occurred after my last update. And it's always a good idea to visit the official GitLab website or documentation for the most current information, right? Please remember this, this note that developments may have occurred after my last update 
and it's always a good idea to visit the official GitLab website or documentation for the most current information. Okay. That's the features and GitLab, features of GitLab, right? Then next is GitLab architecture. So you can see your GitLab architecture. So please find high level diagram of GitLab if you want to know the more, right? Then if you want to more, uh, then you can visit this GitLab official site. Okay, so you can go to the official site. You can see here, this is the official site of GitLab. So I'm going to show you. So this is the official site of GitLab, right? If you want to uh, learn the details, what is architecture, GitLab architecture, then you can go to this official site of GitLab and you can check it, okay? So now here, let's check GitLab architecture. So you can see GitLab high level architecture. So you can see here in architecture, first of all here, HTTP or HTTPS, right? Then sends to, nginx and here tcp80 port right for 443 so here we are going to use this tcp80 port then nginx sends to gitlab pages tcp right or you can see here gitlab workhouse then here you can see ssh so ssh sends to gitlab shell with tcp22 then here you can see it. gitlab shell sends to gitlab workhouse after that, it's Puma, then Gitlay, and you can see PostgreSQL and Redis, right? So this is the architecture of GitLab. So let's learn in detail. So you can see GitLab architecture is designed to be flexible, scalable, and capable of supporting various deployment options, including GitLab.com's cloud-hosted ad services and self-hosted instances. And the architecture consists of several components that work together to provide a complete DevOps platform. So keep in mind that there might have been update or changes to the architecture since then. So it's best to refer the official GitLab documentation, right? For the latest details. So here, so this is the official site. So you can refer this, right? Okay, so now, so here an overview the, uh, the typical GitLab architecture. Okay. So now the first is web application. Okay. So the web application is the user interface that developers and team members interacts with via web browser. And it provides access to various features like code repositories, issue tracking, then merge request, then CICD pipelines and more. And the web application is built using Ruby on Rails and interacts with other components through APIs. The next is database. So GitLab releases on relational database to store and manage project data, including information related to users, projects, issues, issues then merge requests and CICD pipelines and other settings. By default, GitLab issues PostgreSQL as its database, but it also supports MySQL and other database systems. Then next is GitLab repository management. So GitLab handles Git repositories management, storing the actual code and version history. GitLab uses the standard Git protocol for interacting with Git repositories and repositories can be stored on the file system or in some setups and object storage system like GitLab or GitLab pages. Okay, now next is background workers. So GitLab uses background workers to handle time consuming and resource intensive tasks asynchronously. These workers are responsible for processing jobs related to continuous integration, integration and continuous deployment, email notification and other background activities. And then next is object storage GitLab. So in larger GitLab installation, Git repositories might be stored on separate object storage system like GitLab and GitLab 
uh, is a custom built git rpc service that enables distributed and scalable storage for git repositories the next is cicd runners so gitlab cicd releases on runners to execute CI/CD jobs, runners can be either shared runners provided by GitLab.com or decided runners installed on self-hosted instance. Right, runners execute the defined CI/CD pipelines and report the result back to GitLab. Okay. Then next is container registry. So what is container registry? So GitLab provides an integrated container registry that allows you to store Docker images within GitLab. And the container registry is used to manage and distribute container images uses in CI/CD pipeline or other parts of your infrastructure. Then load balancer. So in high availability, Setup GitLab instances often use a load balancer to distribute incoming web requests across multiple nodes, ensuring high performance and fault tolerance. Then cache. So GitLab uses caching mechanisms to improve performance and reduce the load of the database. And caches are used to store frequently accessed data, reducing needed for, sorry, need for repeated database queries, then reverse proxy, that means you know, engineers, Apache, and etc. So GitLab instances typically use, utilize a reverse proxy server like engineers or Apache to handle incoming web requests, improve security, and provide SSL termination. Okay. So you can see these are the primary component of typical, typical GitLab architecture. And however, the setup and configuration can vary depending on whether it's small scale deployment or large scale enterprise installation. For more detailed information and guidance on setting up a GitLab instance, so that you can refer the official site of GitLab documentation and architecture guides. Okay. Now, next and last point is what is GitLab CI/CD pipeline? So what is GitLab CI/CD pipeline? So GitLab CI/CD, that means continuous integration and continuous deployment is a set of tools and practices provided by GitLab and a web-based platform for version control and collaboration. So it allows developers to automate and streamline the process of building, testing and deployment software application. So what is CI/CD pipeline? So the CI/CD pipeline in GitLab refers to the series of steps that course changes go through from point they are committed and to repositories. So to the point they are deployed and made available to users. So as you can see, here's a breakdown to what GitLab CSD pipeline involves. So firstly, version control. So developer committed their code changes to a Git repositories and hosted on GitLab CI, then continuous integration CI. So here upon code commit, then GitLab automatically triggers CI jobs. Then CI job include tasks such as building application, then running tests and performing code analysis. The, then the goals is catch integration issues early and ensure that code base remains stable. Then third one is continuous deployment, that means CD. After successful CI, that means continuous integration, then CD phase begins. So CD involves automating the deployment of code changes to various environment, staging, production, and etc. And deployment can include tasks like deploying to servers, updating databases, and configuring services. Then pipeline configuration. So the pipeline is defining defined using a git.gitlab ci.yaml file and in the file repository. And the YAML file defines the different stages, jobs, and steps in the pipeline. And it specifies which tasks should run in parallel, which needed to be sequential, and how the stages are organized. Okay. Then artifacts and cache. So CI jobs are generated artifacts. Okay, that are saved for later use. And caching uh, can be used to speed up the build process by storing dependencies between runs. Then monitoring and notifications. 
So GitLab provides dashboard and logs to monitor the progress of CICD pipelines. And notifications can be configured to alert developers about pipeline status or failures. Then in last, deployment strategies. So GitLab supports various deployment strategies such as rolling update, blue-green deployments, and canary releases. And the strategies help ensure smooth de deployment without disturbing users' experience. So that's the GitLab CICD pipeline offers automation and repeatedly reducing manual intervention uh, and the risk of human error during the software development life cycle. So it encourages a culture of continuous improvement by promoting frequent code integration and automated testing and seamless deployment. So this is the you ultimately leads to faster delivery of features and improvement to end users while maintaining code equality and stability. So that's the GitLab CICD pipeline. So you can see the steps, right? And the meaning of these steps. So that's the small introduction about GitLab. So here we have learned what is GitLab, features of GitLab, GitLab architecture in detail, and what is GitLab CICD pipeline. So that's the small introduction about GitLab. If you want to learn in detail, or if you want to know the more details about GitLab, then you can go to this official site of GitLab, right? So you can refer the official site, then you can learn in detail. So thank you for watching.